ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's my pleasure to be with you this morning uh, in this opening session of the three-day event, visionary event on structural engineering. I'm especially delighted to use this occasion to welcome again, I couldn't say it, <laughs> uh, Mr. Ashraf Habib Buyar, whom I know since uh, early 1970 in, at the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, well, recently there was, uh, there has been a lot of talks about the term startup. This was exactly what my friend uh, Ashraf has accomplished before anybody else in the 1970s, which results in the world, one of the world's most used uh, software suite. As you may know, in the last two decades, I think the, we have seven ongoing major global megatrends that have or will have serious impact on the lifestyle of humanity. These are population growth, rapid urbanization, aging society, wealth inequalities, global connectedness, climate change, and disruptive technologies. Structural engineers or structural engineering profession not only need to adapt to these global megatrends, but must also play a key role to mitigate their, their impacts, especially on the issue of rapid urbanization. At the start of the 19th century, only 3% of world's population live in the cities. Today, the figure is over 50%. Therefore, all cities in the world need resilience and safety of their built environment, which include buildings, bridges, tunnels, expressways, and other infrastructures using the latest technologies. As a structural engineer who have been associated with uh, this profession for the last 40 years, both in academics and in practice, it's my joy to share with you my personal reflection on this profession during the last two, three decades. When I was a student in the university, that was back in 1967 to 1971, the, the main calculation device which all engineering students carry with pride is what they call slide rules. I think many of you uh, may not have seen the slide rules, especially the younger one. Slide rule has been disrupted by the uh, handheld calculator in the late 1970s. What, as a structural engineer uh, student at that time, what we learned is pure knowledge. Technology has not been taught in the classroom. And due to the limitation of the computing tools, perhaps the only 20, 30 percent of what we learn in the class has been put into use in practice. Of course, another 70, 80 percent are still very important to make the body of knowledge uh, complete. With our modern tools like what we have today, structural engineers in the old days have developed a common skill, you know known as engineering sense. It's difficult to exactly define and even measure what is the engineering sense. It's just, it's a cumulative result of uh, practical experiences, hand-on practical experiences. So in the old days, when we want to analyze a complex structural system in the old days, we use slide rules, only slide rules. Complex structure must be simplified into something simple, a simple mathematical model, using engineering sense, 
and of course the, the computation needs to be approximated so that we can do it by hands. You can imagine how long it takes to design, to analyze and design a building. It takes months, many months. Structure in the old days did not have the luxury of software package and technologies. In fact, software package is just uh, a form of technologies in which uh, knowledge has been packaged so that it will be convenient for users to use. So, when we want to design a building, we have to do even the very basic one, the concrete mix design, to come up with the concrete stain. We have to do, we have to understand the soil and boiling report to come up with the capacity of the pie. We have to make many assumptions so that the complete three-dimensional structures can be represented by a two-dimensional frame, for example, because otherwise we would not be able to solve it. Even theory is available, it's just beyond our capacity. This is why we always need the big factor of safety to in the, design code, in the design code to safeguard the bad assumptions and human mistakes. Without computer software, structure design of a building takes, as I said, um, years sometimes. Today, I understand that uh, many projects uh, only can only can be complete by a few months, even weeks sometimes. But this tedious and hands-on process help develop good and resourceful structural engineers, which understand who understand the whole process. Today, modern structural engineers have the luxury of software tools, technologies, specialists to make the entire process of design and construction more accurate, faster and with ample choices. Unfortunately, there is a feeling that the new generation of structural engineers fall too dependent on technologies, on software. Most of them lack the engineering sense that we are talking about, that uh, the old time engineers uh, normally had. Simply because with the software, they don't need engineering sense to analyze and decide structures or minimum use of them. Computer is like the future AI. They are almost do everything for us. So you can see that today, many young structural engineers discuss about the beauty of the graphics on your screen, rather the beauty of structural theories. It's quite different from the old days. So my personal advice to structural engineer is that uh, they should be, they should not depend too much on technologies. Otherwise, they become technological operators. Structural engineer must continue to play the role of a creator, and with the added advantage of software and technologies, structural engineer must strive to become not only creator but a great creators. There are tools for them to select different choice to optimize and come up with something new. Well, to end my remarks, I would like to thank the Dr. Anwanawit, uh, who head our AAT solution, for serving as the interface between the academic knowledge and the available technology in the real world. As an institute, Asian Institute of Technology continue to engage in research projects and development of technologies and to provide a platform like this for sharing knowledge and technologies. Today, the, this morning, is heartening to see the many international experts traveling from near and afar to share their experiences. This includes uh, renowned architects, 
professional engineers, academicians, software developers, project developers. I hope that uh, participants will be able to benefit from this share of knowledge and experiences, and that our profession will continue to make the built environment to truly serve the mankind. Thank you.